Hello everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We're going to show you how to root the Shield Android TV from start to finish. The only thing we will not be doing today is unlocking your bootloader. You can only do that one time and mine's already unlocked. So we'll show you as much as we can, but you'll be on your own for that piece of the equation. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to NVIDIAShieldZone.com NVIDIAShieldZone.com and you're going to go to uh, Shield Android TV and the tutorial Root Shield Android TV. By the time you look at this video it uh, may have changed locations but this is what you're looking for. First thing we need are the prerequisites. We need these four files. We need to make sure we have a USB mouse handy. So let's go ahead and grab these files. I've already done it once as you can see by my download bar but technical difficulties. Now I'm doing this on a Windows 7 virtual machine. It's practically clean. There's no drivers installed. There's nothing installed. It's pretty much as standard as you're going to get. So hopefully this will cover the greatest number of people. Windows 8 is going to be similar. Windows 10 is going to be similar. But Windows 7 seems to be the popular choice. So um, we've got these all downloaded now. So let's go ahead and um, show them in folder. And I'm going to go ahead and take these specific four files. I'm going to paste them onto the desktop just for easy access. All right, we're going to keep the website up. Let's first of all install minimum AD. Well, let's follow the tutorial here. All right, so you're going to need to be able to see your PC and your Shield TV's HDMI out. Um, we're going to be running a separate camera to look at the Shield screen when we need to, but I recommend having it hooked up to a small TV or something while you're doing the tutorial. Uh, when you unlock the bootloader, it will wipe the entire box clean. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, there's only one way to root, and that is with an unlocked bootloader. So I recommend that you do that before you get too much stuff on your Shield Android TV. Um, if you use two-step authentication, make sure you have Google Authenticator ready, just standard stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is install minimum ADB and fast boot, which we have downloaded. This will give you the basic Android files you need to communicate. Oh, absolutely, I accept the agreement. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and create a desktop icon. That'll help us later. All right. So we don't really need to launch it right now. We'll just finish. Ensure the Shield family drivers are extracted somewhere on your system, and you know where they are. So here are the Shield family drivers. I'm going to right-click and um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead, let's see, what do I have to extract with? Uh, let's see, Windows Explorer. Alright, so uh, this does one of those, I should be able to just double click it and have that thing extract, but uh, okay, I have Directory Opus installed and that does some stuff. So let's open this with, um, let's see, can I do it from here? Fine. So we're going to go ahead and unzip this wherever you want. I'm just going to drag this thing out of here, copy it to the desktop. All right, so once you extract Shield Family, you're going to end up with a folder that says Shield. If you look inside, you're going to see some basic files. These are what you're looking for. So make sure you know where that Shield folder is. All right, we do. Extract the Torp Recovery image. So again, I'm going to open this with Opus. Here's the uh, shield recovery image. I'm just going to drop that on the desktop too so we can keep track of it. All right, what's next? Mm -hmm. And put this in your minimal ADB and fast boot, right? So I'm going to use directory opus just to help me file manage. You can do it the hard way if you like. So we're going to go to C, program files, minimum ADB and fast boot. And we're going to copy that guy right in there. Oh, yes, absolutely. Elevate my permissions. Tell you what, Windows 7 is a picky one. Yes, didn't I already tell you it was okay? All right, good. So now we have our twerp image here inside of our minimal ADB and fast boot. All right, 
copy super su dot zip into your minimal adb folder easy enough pow super uh, super su zip is in there great that's what we were looking for <sighs> okay next up plug your shield into the pc with the usb cable all right so we're going to have a little side video here showing us how to get that set up and the cables plugged in all right so what's going to go ahead and it's probably going to say something about installing some drivers you're going to get an autoplay right because it picks the android tv up as a media device so you could jump in there and do some stuff but just close that all right so now we need a mouse I think yeah, I could probably handle that. We have a mouse plugged in. Confirm drivers for ADB uh, are installed. So I'm going to right click on computer, hit properties. If you know how to get to the device manager another way, by all means. So we're going to go into the device manager, and sure enough, we do not have the ADB drivers installed. Right click, update driver, browse my computer browse go to the desktop where we had our shield folder hit OK hit next and it will go ahead and install your software alright so we now have an Android composite ADB interface perfect it repicked the shield back up Gonna close alright good so now we have ADB installed alright um, so we've gone through all of that we updated the driver Enable developer mode on the shield. So let's do that next. All right, now we're going to go ahead and enable developer mode if it's not already enabled. Go to settings and developer options. You may already have this turned on. If you do, great. If not, go to about, go down to build and tap it seven times. No need, I'm already a developer. All right, so we got developer options. We're going to go in there. We're going to go into debugging. And we're going to make sure that USB debugging is on, which it is. So what's next on our list? All right, we've enabled debugging. And currently, we did not see a pop-up happen requesting authorization. All right, don't worry. It will. All right, so let's go back here. Um, we've set our uh, debugging to on. Um, if it doesn't show up now, it shows up later. Great. So we are ready. Launch minimal ADB and fast boot. Excellent. All right, let's zoom in a little bit here. You guys can see. All right, so essentially what we have here, it's been a while since I've used this tool. You'll have to forgive me. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is um, put us in a DOS box. We're going to type in ADB devices. Oops, DB devices. All right, and now if you look on the piece or on the uh, shield screen, you're going to see allow USB debugging. We're going to go ahead and clip that in here so you can see it. Select always allow from this computer. Hit OK. That's all you got to do. Now, try ADB devices again. Perfect. We get the serial number of the device, and it tells us that there's a device connected. Awesome. Okay, we no longer need the video on the uh, shield, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. We'll patch all that in later. Next up, type in ADB devices. You have to authorize the PC. Once you see your shield PC, you're ready to proceed. So the next thing you're going to do... Let me get these up where you can see both of them. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reboot into the bootloader. As you can see, I did a reboot and I typed it in incorrectly. ADB reboot bootloader. Screen goes dark on the shield. And we get the fast boot screen, also known as the bootloader screen. They call this the fast boot menu. All right, so we've got that recording. Next up, we're going to flip back to the PC. Next up, 
we need to verify that fast boot drivers are installed. So we're going to type fast boot devices. Oops, fast boot devices. And it says that it is there, right? It says the fast boot devices are there. So what we can do is if for some reason your fast boot devices are not there, you're going to go back to the device manager. You're going to look for a yellow astro uh, little, little little yellow exclamation point in here and you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to right click on the little yellow arrow, the exclamation point, you're going to say install drivers, you're going to point it back to the shield family and you should be good. So in this case, we're good to go. We're ready. We are ready for fast boot. So we'll scroll down here. So we just did step two. Step three, unlocking the bootloader. I knew it was in here somewhere. Fast boot OEM unlock and hit enter. Now, if you've got the 16 gigabyte unit, then uh, it's going to be just a few, a few minutes that that's going to take place. It is going to wipe the whole machine. You'll reboot afterwards. And then you're going to go right back to what we were doing here before. Hopefully your bootloader's already unlocked. That would be nice. But let's say for the sake of argument that it is. So once the bootloader's unlocked, return to the shield interface, repeat steps 9 through 10, 9 and 10 above, re-enable USB debugging, you'll have to reauthorize your PC, all that good stuff. So now we're ready to move on to uh, number 6, which is of course to um, put Super SU on the shield. Alright, so to do that, we actually have to be um, <laughs> we actually have to be back in our standard Android interface to do that. So I'm just going to type in fast boot reboot. That's going to go ahead and reboot the shield. Oops, I don't know what happened to my camera here. And the shield boots. Now, the only reason we went to the bootloader before was to make sure that your bootloader was already unlocked. All right, so as you can see, the shield came back up. Now we're ready to go ahead and use ADB to push over Super SU, which you put in the folder already. ADB push, right? Um, let's see. Just following the instructions here, making sure we're doing the right thing. Super SU dot zip and slash SD card backslash. You have to have both slashes in there, folks, or it does not work. All right. And if it's good, it'll tell us that it copied OK, which it did. Perfect. So now Super SU is over there. We are now ready to go back to fast boot. Um, so again, we're going to make sure fast boot devices shows us. Oh, we have. Well, we can't because we haven't rebooted yet. ADB reboot bootloader. All right, the shield's going back into boot mode, the bootloader mode, and we are there. Fast boot devices. And there it is. All right, now we are ready to flash the twerp recovery uh, recovery software onto the shield. We need that in order to install Super SU. All right, so we are going to go ahead. We already have the twerp uh, image in there. So we're going to go fast boot. Sorry, my dog's barking. Flash recovery TWRP shield tv dot img and it says okay it pushed it over perfect we're in gr we're in great shape now back on the shield we're going to go ahead and boot in recovery kernel which is the second item on the screen all right so to do that we're going to tap on the power button on the shield once now we're going to hold it down for three seconds and let it go it's going to boot into recovery kernel. This will boot us into twerp and we are ready to actually flash super SU. There's what we wanted to see. All right, so this is why we need the mouse. No mousey, no twerpy. So we're going to go ahead and hit install 
and if you push super su properly it is already here waiting for you so we're gonna go ahead and select that we will just accept all the defaults it's going to install super su and we're gonna reboot the system pow believe it or not we're now rooted but just for fun we'll boot ourselves back up into Android I'll record some Android root stuff take the camera off we don't need that anymore All right, we're back into Android. I'm going to go ahead and start recording that screen. Ah, let me see if I can get this recording here so you can see our first attempt. So the first thing I have installed is Link to SD, which is a, um, it is actually, I have a couple of different super uh, root user type apps. I'm going to go ahead and grant access. This is how you know it worked, but you probably won't already have those pre-installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Sideload Launcher. We're going to make sure Super SU is there and where it belongs. There it is. We're going to run it, make sure it doesn't need to update it. It does not. And if you happen to have any uh, root apps already installed, they will show up. That's it. You're rooted. That's really all there is to it. So now that you're rooted, um, next time there's an OTA or an over-the-air update, um, you will find that uh, it will not install by itself. What you will have to do is follow my other tutorial. Let's jump back to the PC here. You're going to need to follow my other tutorial, which is to uh, do manual updates without losing data. And you're going to want to pick the last version according to whichever shield you have, either a 16-bit or the 500 uh, gigabit, uh, gigabyte version. Right? You're going to want to pick out the uh, ROM that's apl applicable to you, right? Get the latest one and then follow this procedure. It will actually roll you back to the most current version but leave your data there, right? Once you've rolled back, you'll lose root and the OTA will actually work. Once OTA comes back up, all you have to do is jump through this rooting process again. Super SU is already copied over. All you really need to do is jump back into the bootloader, go back into a recovery mode, right? Just by doing ADB reboot recovery. Believe me, once you get good at this, it, it takes like five minutes to do a full uh, rooting job. So there you have it. Um, it doesn't get much easier than that. Follow the steps, be patient. Some things take longer than others, especially if you've got the 500 gig unit, it will take forever. Um, suffice to say, though, that um, I think you'll find that this is a fairly simple process once you've gone through it a couple of times. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. If you have any other uh, rooting questions, join us at NVIDIAShieldZone.com. Uh, we actually have a live chat window that pops up on the left-hand side that you can try to chat with me directly. I'll see if I can, what I can do to help you through your problems with your uh, flashing or rooting or anything. So this is Shane Armand Rowe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.